Let's talk a little bit about Will Martino and his experience in the blockchain industry. He is one of the, I personally think he'll go down as one of the greatest minds to ever enter the space with the likes of Stuart Popejoy, Stuart Haber, Scott Stranada, Satoshi Nakamoto, Vitalik Buterin. These are all huge, big names in the space. And I think that the Cadena team is just getting ready to get to that point where the entire world's about to wake up and realize what potential a blockchain like Cadena has because it's been crafted by the best minds in the world. It really has. So I just want to play this short little clip from Consensus. It's a podcast where Will Martino is speaking. So I just want to highlight some of the key things that I'm hearing in these interviews that a lot of people I think are going to overlook. Ready? Let's dive deep. So doing a little bit more research on EKMH, there's a great article over here. Stuart Popejoy and I experienced the limitations of the sector firsthand during our time at JP Morgan Blockchain Center for Excellence. There we led the creation of JP Morgan's first blockchain, Juno. Before building anything, we conducted an in-depth analysis of early versions of Hyperlever, Axani, Symbiont. This research made it clear to us that existing blockchain options on the market were technologically inadequate for the needs of enterprise businesses. We had worked on and learned from the challenges of adopting existing public blockchains for enterprise use, including what it takes to successfully lead financial institutions towards decentralized technology. We also discovered the inside of banks was not the right place to drive blockchain forward. As we couldn't make the decisions we needed to to truly drive innovation, using our experience at JP Morgan as the framework, we left JP Morgan team in 2016 to found Cadena, a hybrid blockchain platform company. Just to catch you guys up to speed, Will Martino was actually recruited out of Ivy League Yale Graduate School by the SEC. He was then, I believe, sent to a private hacker school that the SEC actually sent him to. He then built supercomputers that could analyze the entire stock market. If I'm not mistaken, go watch my previous interview with him. The amount of knowledge that the Cadena team has by working directly for banks, working directly for governments, being able to interview everybody on the Ethereum team, the XRP team, the Hyperledger team, JP Morgan Chase flew out all of these big shots, the greatest minds in the industry, and then Stuart and Will got to interview them one-on-one -on -one and actually see what all of their limitations were. So why did Cadena leave JP Morgan Chase? I believe it's because Stu and Will understood exactly what a public and private blockchain needed to do in order to drive innovation. But I don't think that JP Morgan Chase was willing to give them the resources and invest five years that it would take for them to basically build out what Cadena is today. So for the last five to six years, Stu, Will, and the entire Cadena team have been building greatness and they've been attracting the greatest minds in the industry. So I just wanna let this little clip play. Hopefully you guys are really paying attention because these are the things that you need to build a blockchain for the billions. And you guys have heard the Cadena team say it multiple times, Cadena is a blockchain for the billions. It is for the people by the people. So let's start off with a clip which talks about how Cadena actually got started and how they turned down billion dollar investors to keep a low market cap to help grow adoption for everybody. To Dana, you guys are doing your third token sale, trying to raise $20 million. Tell me a little bit about the kind of user participation you've been seeing in terms of the token sale. So tell me a little bit about how the token sale has been running on CoinList so far. So it's been going well so far. They, we can't go into too many details just because of you know regulatory concerns, but CoinList has been a great partner in getting the token sale off the ground and bringing people in. It goes on for another two weeks. And this is the sale that is you know, right before the uh, main platform launch, which is on December 5th. And it is kind of this initial period when the system is booting up and we're starting to get more and more people involved. The interest has been interesting. It's been global um, and people have been looking at the way that things are structured and are they're, they're, like, they're liking what they see overall. Like between them and the miners, miners have been loving us. And then people have been looking at the rounds and have been like, you know, this makes some sense. This is a new strategy for how to do this stuff. And yeah, I think that this could work. This might be what comes after IEOs. Well, I actually think that it's interesting that this sale is open to US accredited investors, which is a strategy that you had taken by doing two sales um, side by side. Do you want to talk a little bit about the sale strategy and opening up the token sale to U.S. accredited investors? Sure. I mean, uh, getting the U.S. involved is a very important thing. And the way that we structured the uh, Reg D offering 
is one where you can get in at a very similar rate to our early investors. We don't believe in launching an application or launching a network with a multi-billion dollar market cap where VCs are already 30, 40 X right at launch. We don't think it's healthy. And I think that the market's proving that out. We take a very different approach, which is launch with a very low market cap because we want to be able to gather as many people who are interested in the platform as we can early to help us build the thing into something great. You don't hear that much in this industry. Everybody else in this industry is all about the money grab. How much capital can we raise up front to launch with an extremely high market cap? That way our early investors, our VCs can take profits. They're all happy. That way when price dumps down, guess who steps in and buys the dips after they convinced all retail investors to FOMO in at peak formation. This is just things that you don't really see in this industry. And I also want to point out the fact that Cadena was launched in 2016. No coins were ever sold anywhere until 2019. So two years later, and this is December of 2019. So I want to say two years, no coins were sold. They sat there and they built Cadena, didn't market it, didn't do anything, just built it and sat there for two years. Then in 2020, they started to sell to accredited USA investors. And that's also something that you do not see any other crypto project doing. So when you talk about regulations and securities, assuming that will work for the SEC, probably had a good understanding of what they needed to do perfectly, precisely, to make sure that they could not pass the Howey test. And let me be clear on that, you want to fail the Howey test, you do not want to pass it. If you pass it, you're a security. And then you also hear him say there that they built a network, not an application, not a service, not a software, a network. That's what Cadena is going to be. Cadena is going to be the internet. Anything that you want to build on it, any application, any app, any software, any service, you're going to be able to do that on top of Cadena. It's cool. It's crazy. Speaking of other platforms, I know today you guys are announcing this partnership with the Web3 Foundation in building for the Polkadot blockchain. Um, so tell me a little bit about how that came about and why the Polkadot ecosystem? Yeah, it's a, been very interesting talking with them. We started talking with the Cosmos Foundation um, a while back and have already done some work to put Cadena Mint, which is packed on top of Tendermint, um, into at least a first version. We're continuing to work with them and expand out the feature set, also integrate it more broadly with our ecosystem and with theirs. And we started talking with uh, the Web3 Polkadot people and they were very interested in looking into seeing if we can get packed on top of Polkadot as well. Uh, packs, I don't, you know, Cadena doesn't believe there's gonna be one uh, chain to rule them all, but we do believe there's gonna be one smart contract language and this seems to resonate with a lot of people. Smart contract languages take years to build. Um, there's no real, I mean, there's just a lot of magic that takes place to actually build one that really works and that is the right structure. So once you have something that works, so long as it's embeddable, then you can start putting it on other platforms. Impact from day one was always designed to be embeddable on different uh, consensus protocols. We put it on our private blockchain first, Kadena Coro, and then we put it onto Chainweb, and then we put it onto Tendermint, and hopefully we'll be able to figure out how to put it onto Polkadot. And the lovely part of it is because Pact um, on Chainweb needs so much interoperability from just out of the gates, because a multi-chain architecture, it already has most of the tools that you would need to go from, let's say, Cosmos to Kadena Mainnet to uh, Polkadot Parachain, perhaps, to something else. And this is where we're gonna wrap it up right here because I have to do a little bit more research, but I wanna show you guys the videos where you quite possibly may or may not be able to settle transactions from any chain using Pact on top of Kadena. Now, Kadena Tindermint, I believe, is already live now. So I'm going to show you guys another video. We're going to walk through what that might mean for this industry or what it could mean. But again, it's way over my head. So hopefully you guys are enjoying this content. I just wanted to help educate you guys more about who's working on the Cadena team, how long that they've actually been sitting in the shadows building. And one of the last key pieces I want to point out there is what Will just said. They don't believe that any one blockchain will rule them all. But most likely there's going to be one smart contract coding language that will rule them all. So I'm not 100% positive, but because they now have Tindermint and Pact is integrated with Tindermint, will people be able to build applications on Cosmos using Pact? Because that's going to be the secret sauce. That's what makes these blockchains so much more secure. It makes them so much more superior. Now, here's where it might get questionable, right? If you're already coding in Pact and Pact was designed for the Cadena blockchain, are you going to want to go build an application on Cosmos with Pact or on Polkadot with Pact? Maybe. Maybe you will. Or you just want to build it on top of Cadena. 
I personally think a majority of the space is going to migrate over to Cadena because it's going to offer so much more utility, gas free transactions, DeFi, NFTs with DNA, Marmalade, all of these key things that are getting ready to turn on over the next couple of months that have been in the works for five to six years now. So very inspirational. Make sure you guys swing over to Twitter. Show the Cadena team some love. I believe they just broke over 220,000 followers on Twitter. Let's go, guys. Show Will Martino and Stuart some love. I appreciate you guys. Thank you guys so much for stopping by the channel. Again, my name is Ryan Meta. Peace. Thank you.